Whether you want to dive into medieval history, get a taste of the local markets, or eat a dozen espetos by the beach, Spain has a city to match every personality. And if the last few months of content have been any clue, the country's capital is certainly a place where we feel right at home. Well, welcome to Madrid. In this video, we'll help you navigate the city of elegant boulevards and portico lined plazas so you can hit the ground running and enjoy everything it has to offer. Although we've gone to Madrid in multiple occasions, getting there is not always the cheapest, at least from Chicago. So one thing we do often is get tickets to a nearby city like Barcelona or Lisbon in Portugal and fly a low-cost airline from there. It's about shopping around to see what works best. It's worth noting that the last time we visited Spain, there were testing requirements related to COVID in order to enter the country. But this is all quickly changing. Make sure you check the US Embassy website or call the airline for details. Most likely, you'll be arriving at the Adolfo Suarez Madrid Barajas Airport, which, like one of our favorite travel bloggers perfectly described, it's a little bit like Narnia. <laughs> if you're taking the metro downtown, which is the easiest and most affordable option, follow the signs to Terminal T1, T2, and T3. So when you're arriving to the airport mm -hmm. and you're gonna take the metro downtown, you have to pay an airport fee. So before you go to the gates to get on the metro, you have to pay an airport fee. So you're gonna come to this machine and one of the first things it's gonna tell you when you insert your metro card is it's gonna ask you how many airport fees are there gonna be. So if you're two travelers like us, you pick two, which would be a total of six euros. What if it's you, your first time though? If it's your first time arriving, then yeah, you can purchase one of these cards, which we did, and uh, the airport fee will be included on that. So you don't have to worry about that. And usually, let's say you're two travelers, like Marie and I, it's only gonna give you one card, so you just tap it twice. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you decide to visit a nearby city during your stay, you might have to pay an additional fee to enter and exit the new area, like it happened to us when we visited the Ex Madrid Entertainment Mall. So what's happening? All right, so we learned something today. Uh, we learned that if you're traveling outside of Madrid, so I guess like a different, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say like district or or area. You, suburb. Yeah, you may need to pay an exit fee. And the stop that we went to uh, doesn't have like the machines to purchase that exit fee. Kind of like when you go to the airport where you have to pay a special fee to exit the airport or go to the airport. So we need to do that, but uh, now we have to go back one stop so we could potentially purchase that, uh, that exit ticket. That was a mess up on our part, but hey, you learn something new every day. In terms of taxis, we tend to avoid them, unless we absolutely need to use them. Nothing makes us angrier than having a driver going in circles or taking a longer route just to overcharge you. But don't forget to tip the driver if you do take that option. Buses, on the other hand, are just as easy to use as the Metro and a great alternative to getting closer to your destination. However, we've had the experience where a route gets canceled and we've waited in vain for a long time, which shouldn't happen too often. If you think you've waited too long, ask any of the bus drivers if your route was canceled. Google Translate can help you if you don't speak the language. To get to other regions of Spain from Madrid, the most popular options are low-cost flights like the one that we took to get to Granada. Or you could head to the Atocha station to take the AVE, Spain's high-speed train. The station alone is worth visiting. It has a beautiful interior garden. So while you're here, don't miss out on that perfect selfie opportunity. Now that we have transportation covered, let's move on to lodging. There's quite a few swanky hotels in Madrid for a decent price too, like this one, right on Gran Via. Not super spacious compared to the other hotels, but very comfortable, with a fancy coffee machine, a pretty view of the streets, and you even get a complimentary drink upon arrival. If you're on a budget, you can still get a very nice hotel on a less busy street or area of the city. We're big fans of Hotel Infantas, for example, 
So much so, we stayed in the same room twice. <laughs> it had everything we needed, including a desk to edit videos, a very large bed. You also have a useful mini fridge, which was great because we could get drinks and snacks from a convenience store that was very close by. We also had a nice closet with a safety box and a pretty standard bathroom. The view isn't great, but we could open the window to get a nice breeze, which is important because the air conditioning system was turned off a couple of times because it was considered too cold outside. Yes, that can happen. Now, let's talk voltage. So, we brought this one. Now, it's like a it works as a multi-plug USBs, which is awesome. Now, you gotta be careful with this because this one, this one that just plugs in, it doesn't do like the voltage conversion, right? So in the United States, we use 100 volts. In Europe, I believe they use 240 volts. This does not convert it. A lot of your tech, will, the chargers that you use, will do the conversion. So just make sure that whatever you're plugging into here says 100 to 240 volts, and you shouldn't have a problem. So when traveling in Spain, you don't have to rely on your phone or use a SIM plan option for Wi-Fi access. You can actually rent a pocket Wi-Fi or travel Wi-Fi. And this will give you Wi-Fi access wherever you travel within Spain. For example, we went to Granada and Malaga and we always had Wi-Fi access. It's very convenient and you can connect multiple devices to it. So sometimes when you do the SIM card option, your phone hotspot might not be as fast as a travel Wi-Fi. So we do recommend that option. And it was pretty inexpensive at about six euro per day. Next, we'll share some general tips on eating out and some food culture nuances. All right guys, by rule of thumb, if you see a place that is called Tapa or has Tapa on the title or somewhere in their advertisement, we usually try to avoid it because that means it's usually a touristy place, right? Again, you want to try the more local, like tavernas and the restaurants, so by rule of thumb, if you can avoid it, do it. Also, like we mentioned in part one of our Madrid food tour, it's good to avoid restaurants advertising beautiful paellas outside of their establishment. You'll see a lot of these near the most popular attractions. When it comes to markets, everybody is going to tell you to visit Mercado San Miguel. And while the Mercado itself is not bad, do keep in mind that it is very touristy and the prices are super steep compared to a lot of other markets we've shared with you in this series. We basically ask locals where to go, and they always point us in the right direction. Think Mercado Anton Martin, which is surrounded by lots of little bars and restaurants. Then you have Mercado de la Paz, where Casadani is located. In the Chueca neighborhood, you have Mercado San Anton, with lots of little booths to try both Spanish and international cuisines. And San Idelfonso, which is just a short walk away. If you're wondering what the breakfast culture is like, it's common to enjoy some bolleria, which is usually a pastry or a toast with coffee. But you can find spots where you can enjoy a more American style breakfast. Churros are often eaten as a mid-morning snack and lunch is enjoyed later, like around two to 3 p.m. Locals also like to enjoy a vermouth and some tapas before dinner time. This is different from the vermouth we knew by the way. Dinner is usually from eight to 10 p.m and it doesn't have to be heavy. There are tons of great options in Madrid. Do a quick search on Instagram typing hashtag Madrid food to see where the folks are going. Finally, tipping is mostly optional, but as a courtesy, you can leave a couple of euros and restaurants usually expect a 10% tip on your bill, but there's no formal rule. Three, two, one, lift off, and we're off. Yeah. 
quite calm. Uh, I guess because I'm enveloped in this metal structure. Not like when we do the ski lifts where you know, yeah. we're just outside and a wind can push you off. <laughs> it's a nice way to look at the city. Yeah. Oh wow, we're, we're actually over the highway now. Oh, wow. Another great spot for amazing views is the Templo de Debot Park, an ancient Egyptian temple that was dismantled and rebuilt in the center of Madrid. It's a pretty nice hike on a sunny day. Plaza España is a short walk from there and a place we like to go to people watch. They also have a nice playground area if you have kids. Another place you must visit is Palacio Real and its gardens. It's the largest palace in Western Europe and one of the largest in the world, with over 135,000 square meters and 3,418 rooms. And the buildings in the area are also quite majestic. From there, you can also walk to Plaza Mayor, which is admittedly a bit touristy, but we also spend more time wandering around the surrounding streets. Towards the heart of the city, you'll find Cibeles. And just a short walk from there, you'll see Puerta de Alcalá. And right next to Puerta de Alcalá, there's Parque de Retiro. Their close proximity makes it easy to plan a day of sightseeing. If you're planning on doing a lot of eating in Madrid, Parque del Retiro is your friend. It's one of the largest parks in Madrid. It belonged to the Spanish monarchy until the late 19th century when it became a public park. Now, where are we going? I know where we're going. We're not lost. You're not, you sure? My internal compass is telling me where we need to go. Your internal compass, you mean yeah. Apple. My internal compass tells us that we need to go left. We're slightly lost. <laughs> we'll find it. <laughs> I mean, we're not really lost, we just took a detour. So we're walking in the Parque del Retiro and we were actually looking for the glass palace and we found it after a short detour. <laughs> short? Museums in Madrid are abundant. There are so many to choose from, so choose wisely. Museo del Prado is the main national art museum, and you could probably spend days there, so it pays to pick the exhibitions you want to see in advance. The same with Caixa Forum and Reina Sofia, which are two of our favorites. Reina Sofia has a lovely interior garden too. It's important to note that when it's time to close, you'll be kicked out. <laughs> no wandering around here after hours. Madrileños are sticklers when it comes to that. Finally, do spend some time exploring the neighborhoods. Madrid has so many unique barrios with personality, things to do, and they're always just a short walk or train ride away. We'll leave a link down below so you can check out some of the tours we did around the city. All right guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I really do hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions, please let us know in the comments down below and we'll do our best to help you out. And as always, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.